It's Talk Funny, a podcast by Mark Bailey and comics from all over. We ended up in Japan because what happens in Vegas did not stay in Vegas. The Talk Funny podcast from NagoyaRadio.com and Nagoya Comedy. Here's Mark Bailey. Welcome back to Talk Funny. I'm Mark Bailey and this is Mike Miller. And Hi. Mike is trying to figure out how he's going to get back to the subway station. And we were talking about Goodfellas during the break. And I, it might be, it'll be that scene where I've got this big cellophane blanket and I run with you to the phone booth. <laughs> <laughs> I run with you. <laughs> It's a, nobody, nobody, uh, nobody could talk to Mark directly. You know, you have to run, call from a phone, but just run with you to the subway. You know, because I know the fastest way. There's a thing on what, what We're was the about, Jerry uh, Lewis? Jerry Lewis and the, the Hollywood Reporter, the infamous Hollywood Reporter in, interview that he gave. I guess it was a couple months ago. Yeah. Where a reporter from the Hollywood who knew nothing about Jerry Lewis, knew nothing about that time period, I guess, was asking him all these inane questions, and uh, Mr. Lewis didn't quite like that very much it was funny though that comedians lined up basically with jerry lewis i know i did most of them did and then non-comedians are kind of like well, why is he such a jerk because he's a jerk because he's rich and he's a he genius doesn't ha- he doesn't have any projects he's just <laughs> he's like you know just talking to him he has nothing to promote nothing to sell so there's this young pimply face guy and probably probably what was he? Twenty-two, twenty-three, something. Like something. He he gets you know he gets an interview with Jerry Lewis. Have you ever had an interview with Jerry Lewis? I'd like one. I'd be respectful. I you know and comedians are kiss are, the ring. Yeah, comedians are kind of like, hey, let me. Why don't you let a fan interview him? Yeah. You know, and that's what you should do. You should. I mean, even George Carlin, if he were alive, he would be delighted. Seinfeld would be delighted to interview mm. Jerry Lewis. So you got this guy who doesn't really know Jerry Lewis. Yeah, he he was one of the Three Stooges. No, you don't know your comedy, kid. No, was he was he before Ellen DeGeneres? Yeah, he's way before that. You know, so you got a guy who didn't do his homework, going, you know, asking stupid questions. And Jerry Lewis doesn't have a lot of a lot of time. They have the cameras in there and in his dressing room or his home, I guess. I think he was home. interviewed at home. Yeah. So the first one of the questions is, so Jerry, so what was what is he like? Oh, he's up there. Yeah, we we could look it up. And so they ask him, so are you thinking of retiring soon? Basically, the meaning of that question is. You know you're gonna die soon, right? Well, you know, why don't you let some other comics in? You know, you know you're old. Because he's hogging the spotlight these days. Yeah. <laughs> See him on TV all the time. He was born in 1926. Okay. So he's up there. He's uh, 91 years old. Wow, 91. So the guy asked him, "You ever think of retiring?" And he goes, "Why? Why? 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 You got anything else? I mean, well, because like, because you're like, you know." Haven't you like done everything like that you wanted to? Do? Why? <laughs> Why? But I mean, you know, like not even a hey lady. Yeah. <laughs> hey lady. <laughs> that was like I'm, his whole line, right? Yeah. Hey, hey lady. lady. I'm dying over here. <laughs> I know. I got Alzheimer's over here. I don't know. That's that's all. You see, I grew up. I'm from the, you know, I'm younger than Mark, so I grew up and I didn't, that wasn't my generation. I never really saw Jerry, for me, Jerry Lewis was the fat old guy on the telephone, oh, okay. you know, with the kids. I never saw, you know, him with Martin and uh, I never saw any of that Martin and Lewis stuff, but he was apparently a legend back well, in the day. Yeah, as, as, a, as a comedian, you know, you, you start with the obvious people, your, your heroes, George Carlin, and when you, when you decide you want to do comedy... George Carlin and and it hasn't changed, but my you know my heroes George Carlin and Richard Pryor. Yeah. Bill Cosby, I'm gonna say it. Bill Cosby doesn't really change much for me. I'm serious, you know. Even with the pills. I don't want to get drowsy around him, but you know, <laughs> but I mean, that's the man, the man and the art. I yeah. mean, we have to be able to s- separate that. Mm. That's what the uh, Roman Polanski thing was all about. The right. man and the art, right? right. And Roman Polanski was accused of you know uh, Maybe he'll statutory come back. rape. I don't know. Well, he's getting a comeback now, you know, and it's like. The man in the yard, you know, and mm. it's like, so I was, you know, looking at those and then you go back further and then Smothers Brothers is really, they, they really were amazing they for were what they did. They were really mm. establishment guys, though, I heard. Like, no, no, they no. were they were in with Nixon. They were like Republicans. No, th- no, th- they were the first guys to get canceled because of their stance against the Vietnam War. They were the oh, exact oh, opposite. Oh, I'm thinking of, I'm thinking of a laugh, laughing. That's the one I'm uh, thinking yeah, yeah, about. Yeah. You're right. Rowan Smothers, and, that's Rowan Smothers, and Martin. Right, Rowan and Martin. Sorry, Rowan and Martin were the really conservative guys and then the Smothers Brothers were the, <clears throat> the lefty guys. Smothers Brothers would have like a guest like Country Joe and the Fish, you know him? Basically, it was totally anti-Vietnam War song. It was a parody and 
and they were they were totally against the war, and they would they would say things like that, and then the um, I think it was NBC, and the the suits would tell them stop talking politics, and then they would do more and more parodies. They gave uh, Steve Martin his his start. There was a lot of people got their start there in the Smothers Brothers show. And then you watch all of those, and you watch like if you're a comedian Rain Man, like I was when I was a kid, mm-hmm. just I wanted I want more. So it's see where did, where did that come from? And watch I Love Lucy, and you watch all the Carol Burnett and all the Harvey Korman, George and Burns, and uh, all all of those. You watch all of that stuff, and then eventually you end up on you end up with Martin and Lewis. Mm-hmm. They were they were pre Beatles, and they were in the fifties. They were bigger than the Beatles. They were mm. bigger. They were the biggest thing there ever was. Before that, probably would have been Chaplin and the big band guys like did, Glenn Miller. They did. They may have had. Well, they did nightclubs in Dean, Vegas. I think Dean Martin had a TV they probably show for had a while. TV didn't show, he? Probably uh, maybe after they split because they split right yeah. at a certain point. But when they were together and they, they were just they were bigger than Simon and Garfunkel and the Beatles together. When there, there's film, if you can you you can YouTube them and you can see. They go to some hotel in New York and it's just the throngs of – it's like wow. you would think it was like the Pope or something, you know. And people are just waving, you know, and you can't do a lot of stand-up from the window. Then they went into movies and that's about when they broke up. They, mm. But they did some movies together and they were all comedies and stuff. And, you know, Dean Martin is basically the Japanese – for people that don't know, uh, it's called Manzai, Japanese comedy in Japan. And it's basically a ripoff of that. That's that, where it, Manzai comes from, right? Yeah. It's that, that like – Kind of hokey 1940s Dean radio, Mar- originally radio comedy. Yeah, you- Dean Martin is the smooth scummy. Mm-hmm. He's a smooth guy. He's a straight man. And he doesn't have a lot of jokes. He's just like, stop interrupting me. You're making a scene out right. of my. I'm doing a smooth love song, and you're do- and you're like breaking dishes. <laughs> I didn't mean to interrupt anything. Oh, no, no, no. I was getting kind of tired of that song anyway. So was the audience, but I didn't want to say nothing. Oh, You know, and you're talking like a girl, like a lady. Right, right. So he would make – so then Jerry Lewis would just be doing all these uh, antics on stage, you know. You have to see it to appreciate it because at the time, when you think back with the big band – I think uh, uh, Dean Martin started with one of the big band guys. Like they were big on the radio. Then Dean Martin was bigger. Dean Martin at the time was bigger than Elvis be- mm-hmm. before be- before Elvis. And all of this was possible. Frank Sinatra. It's Frank Sinatra. That's right. It was Frank Sinatra with Crosby. Bing Crosby. Bing yeah, Crosby. Bing Crosby. Bing Crosby and Frank Sinatra were competing as like right. the you know the pop idols kind of the, the twink kind of singers they right were the Justin Bieber's of their day yeah back then you had to work for a band a big band and you were the vocalist and if you were the vocalist you made it that's how those guys mm-hmm. made it and Dean Martin that's right Dean Martin was after that he was after Sinatra and then you know he couldn't out Sinatra 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 mm-hmm. was still bigger than Dean Martin mm-hmm. you had a lot of guys Jerry Vale a bunch of guys came out like that the guy we just played Tony Bennett they all came mm-hmm. out around that time so Dean Martin was looking for another you know, he found it by accident by Jerry Lewis coming on and turning it into a, a manzai thing, which didn't exist in Japan. They they, they stole it from the U.S. So, basically from uh, Martin and Lewis. So manzai is not originally from Japan. No, they they admit that they they saw so it, they saw Martin and Lewis and there was another one, Abbott and Costello. Abbott and Costello, yeah, yeah. they were they were which probably was, even before, right? Abbott and they Costello, were on the radio. yeah. So Martin and Lewis were after Abbott and Costello, but they became bigger than Abbott and Costello mm-hmm. ever was. But it was just. You know, it all led to Elvis. It's mm-hmm. just like who's bigger and bigger and bigger. And so when those guys broke up, when Martin and Lewis broke up, it was like a divorce. It was yeah. people are like, you know, you can't go see Dean Martin. That's a betrayal. And so the comedians went to Lewis and then the singers and the girls went I to, you see, know, I see. Dean Martin. But yeah, they did some amazing stuff in Vegas. Now, if you see it, it looks really lame. But I guess the closest would come to it would be like Pee Wee Herman. Mm. If you had Pee Wee Herman dancing on the set of Eddie Vedder. That's mm-hmm. kind of like the feeling. Like, mm-hmm. what are you doing? And you got these these grunge guys going, get him off the stage. It's just so inappropriate. Yeah. That's why it's funny. That's what comedy is. It's incongruence, right? So he would try and kind of crack Dean up, I guess. Jerry yeah. would and stuff. And the, and another fun thing is like what we had in the 80s with Jay, Jay Leno was petrified of the, the mob guys in the 80s that we worked at in clubs when I did comedy there in New York and New Jersey. They they had a lot more mob guys. It was lots of mob guys. They uh, ran the whole the, show, yeah. the whole the whole uh, nightclub. Martin industry, and Lewis, right? and they were they were 
So Lewis would was the first guy to be like uh, anti PC. He'd say mm-hmm. stuff like, uh, "What are they gonna do? Whack me? <laughs> are they looking?" <laughs> it was so inappropriate. Yeah. And Dean Martin would talk to him later. He's like, "You can't make jokes like that." Because <laughs> someone might just go, "Yeah." Yeah, I and am. and then you know, and then they they'd get a mob guy to come up and go, you know, we know you're kidding, we know you're a comedian, you kid. Mm-hmm. But if Dean Martin ever says that. <laughs> He's dead, right? <laughs> so, yeah, this is probably out of reference for most of our fans. I guess the point is, you know, when you're a comedian, you you just keep looking for more and more new influences because you can't be – like the big thing now is Louis C.K., Dave Chappelle. He's back again, you know, and maybe yeah, – very good specials. Yeah. A little bit dated. Yeah. <laughs> but he recorded them like two years ago, I think, right? But, I mean, you can't – so, yeah, there's there's some arguments on Facebook now by, you know, comedy circles. We, we're – part of some of these comedy chat groups and you know some of the open micers are coming out and they're trying to be louis ck no you have to be yourself you can't we're comedians we've heard louis ck we're going to know you're doing his act you can't do that so i thought maybe we could do just a real quick tips for open micers people that are interested okay this would work in the states it would also work in japan we have open mic at most of our shows it's usually at the beginning we keep it to five minutes in some cases three minutes it's very important that you keep whatever whatever the time limit is. It's very mm-hmm. very important. We, we you know because the the venue owner and the and the comics that that have open mic, we're trying to see if you can actually like be a team player. So if we give you the microphone and you're up there for ten minutes, and we said five minutes, that means when we do when we go to Fukuoka and they give us one minute each, you're going to take my time away. You're going to take everybody else's time away, and you're not even that funny because you're still learning. So we, you know, keep the time limit, and you can only do this by timing yourself ahead of time. Get, it? you know, a smartphone in the day of the smartphone, the age of smartphone. There is no excuse for not knowing how long your set is. So keep it under five. Keep keep it four. Well, it's like if there's a band playing and you're invited to go up before and play a little bit of guitar, are you going to play for thirty minutes? Yeah. No, that wouldn't happen because it, the people are there to see the band, right? So you got to you're limited to your time, and it makes you better too because you ramble less. You know, a lot of people, they, they have a few ideas and they just tend to ramble. I'm guilty of it. I've done it a few times when I, you know, I'm trying trying to get less rambly. But it's, uh, yeah, it's 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 a good exercise. Just get two or three, four different good bits and, you know, put something together. Yeah, so arrange your material so you end with something strong. Start with something that's not going to bore people. And in the middle, you can try something out. And I know it's hard for only three or five minutes, but it's possible. I mean, think about on The Tonight Show when uh, Jay Leno and Stephen Wright go up for the first time. They only get six minutes. Why You get five. Why Why do they get only one minute more than you, right? And right. they have their act together. So that's some tips. Open micers, you know, I know it looks easy to see somebody get up on stage and you see somebody do 15 minutes. Well, that, that person is the guy who's getting paid, the comic who's getting paid. And I use paid in a very... Uh, pejorative term i mean paid, paid is kind of a metaphor it's quotes. a metaphor <laughs> pa- paid paid by the universe you know <laughs> with karma or something but no we do get pay and it's nothing to brag about but that's what separates you from the open mic guys and so the the guys are up on stage they're expected to rehearse their stuff ahead of time they know how long it is and you know of course you will do some ad lib sometimes but they have a plan they know what their set is and you know we have Sometimes you're invited by other comics, and they'll say, "Only do five. Only do five. Can I bring a? Can I bring another comic? Yeah, the two of you together can only do five, and that will happen, you know. And it's a good chance to do it, so you don't burn your bridges. So for open micers, keep it under the limit. Keep it well under the limit if you can, and time it. Know how long you have. Also take cues, you know. If you're not getting a response from the audience, move on. Move on. I think to it's else. tough though. I think because I think when you get up there for the first time, you're you're so it's. So, such a hard thing to do at first you feel really really nervous i think most people will and uh and that's why they they don't pick up on the cues of the audience because and that's the other thing is know your material too because the better you know your material the more you can concentrate on what the audience how they're reacting right whereas if you're trying to remember your bits then which has happened to me on one on occasion um then you're not responding to the audience as much so um yeah that's another thing so the open micers, they get up and I think they, like you said before, their heart is racing so fast. And they're like, oh my God, I'm holding a microphone and nobody's laughing. And the last thing you remember, you don't remember anything about time. No. It's just time standing yes. still, right? It's like, 
you are bombing. <laughs> it's God, you know, God going, you're bombing. Yeah. And you're, and you're